My name is Arthur Holland Michel. I'm a senior fellow at the Carnegie Council for Ethics and International Affairs. These days, we are witnessing the emergence of a wide variety of new surveillance technologies. Things like facial recognition, drones, and large location databases. It's all happening so fast that it can sometimes be hard to know where to start when thinking about or discussing each of these technologies' ethical implications. Though these machines do come in a wide variety of different forms and do many different things, as emerging surveillance technologies, they all raise some of the same ethical concerns. For Global Ethics Day 2022, I wanted to highlight six key ethical questions that are common to all emerging surveillance technologies. First, does the technology actually work? It's easy to think that these technologies are all super powerful, but sometimes, indeed oftentimes, new surveillance technologies don't actually prove to be as effective or, or reliable in real life as one imagines they'll be and a poorly performing surveillance system might be much more likely to cause harm, say by misidentifying a suspect in a crime, and its limited or inconsistent benefits won't outweigh its very real costs to privacy and to freedom. Therefore, understanding a technology's real world effectiveness instead of its imagined effectiveness is important for preventing unintended harm, as well as for deciding whether or not the technology should even be used in the first place. Second, is it fair? There's ample evidence to show that new surveillance technologies are disproportionately used against and cause disproportionate harm to non-white populations, as well as socially and economically marginalized groups. This has been a consistent pattern in the past and is likely to continue to be a pattern in the future. Therefore, new surveillance technologies require a very robust assessment to determine their impact across different segments of society and as needed, rules to prevent anticipated injustices. Third, how will it actually be used? Even when a new surveillance technology is at first only used for a narrow and perhaps seemingly noble purpose, say, for example, identifying and finding people who have been kidnapped, that doesn't mean it will only ever be used that way. New surveillance technologies often end up being used in ways that go far beyond their original purpose, often for tasks that raise serious ethical concerns, for example, that tool for finding people who are kidnapped may end up being used to identify protesters who are merely exercising their freedom of speech. Therefore, when a new surveillance technology emerges, it is helpful to consider not just the ethical balance of its stated purpose, but also to imagine and consider the ethical implications of all of the other ways that it might hypothetically be used in the future. Another question is, what happens to all the data? New surveillance technologies tend to generate large amounts of detailed digital data. In the absence of clear standards for how and for how long surveillance data are stored and secured, as well as rules for how the data can and cannot be used, these data may be exploited for privacy intrusions that have nothing to do with the original reason that they were collected. So it's very important to think about how this data will actually be managed. Next, it's important to ask, will it be accountable? Even the most reliable surveillance technologies can fail. And there is always the chance that they will be intentionally used in ways that overstep ethical bounds. When this happens, a clear, transparent, standardized process of accountability is often very important for ensuring that those who are affected have recourse to justice and that those who are responsible for the harm face appropriate consequences. This will also help dissuade authorities from using technologies in unethical ways in the first place or in ways that go beyond their original stated purpose. And finally, is it being rolled out and used transparently? Unfortunately, new surveillance technologies are often deployed secretly without the public's knowledge. 
However, privacy scholars and existing case law tends to agree that you have the right to know about the new surveillance technologies that are used either against you or your community as part of an investigation, or that may collect data about you incidentally as part of their regular use. Transparency is also a good way of keeping our overwatchers accountable. After all, they are much less likely to do bad things with the technology if they know that they are themselves being watched by the public. Finally, and perhaps for our purposes most fundamentally, it is impossible to address any of the other questions that I've raised today, let alone the many other questions that surveillance technologies raise, if we don't know about those surveillance technologies being used in our communities in the first place. There are, of course, other questions, but I think these six questions are a really good place to start. Ultimately, though, the best way to address these and any other concerns is to have an honest, inclusive discourse where everybody has a voice. And so to that end, I invite you all to share your own questions, your concerns, and your personal experiences using the hashtag Global Ethics Day. Thank you so much for watching.